we're at the entrance to cabin two, occupied by first mate, that's me, and chef. And here we are, cabin number two. Let's start by talking a bit about space. As you can see, there's not a whole lot of it, and then we'll go and have a look at some of the details. So, headroom. I'm just about 183 centimetres. The bed is about two metres long, and it's just two small steps to cross the cabin floor. It goes without saying that the size of the yacht has a large impact on the size of the crew cabins. Another factor that plays a big role in the size of your cabin is where it is in the yacht. Up here in the bow, where the ship is shaped like this, there is less space, and as a result, it's up here that you'll usually find the deckhands and junior stewardesses. Further aft, and you'll find the more senior crew. Right, I think it's time we go and have a look at some of the details. Here's the door where we came in, and here's the controls for the aircon. Chef and I have decided on a nice cool 18 degrees. Light switch. Coming around to this wall, the wardrobe. This is me, and this is Chef. You'll notice all of the cabinets have push catches on them. This is a yacht, it does move around. Everything needs to lock and be secure. And there you have it. The extent of my storage space. Now what else have we got in here? fire extinguisher, and my life jacket. At the bottom here, we've got a set of drawers. The top one locks, if you so choose, and they're reasonably deep. Let's continue round. My bed. Just give me a second while I change into something a bit more comfortable. That's much better. Shall we jump up? As you can see, I've got a little step. Up here we've got a bedside table. Perfect for me water and me mobile phone, which I can charge using the socket here. Bedside lamp. Pretty handy that. My porthole, or rather square, and this great long shelf with next to nothing on it. The last thing to show you down here at the foot of the bed is this emergency escape hatch. In addition to the usual escape route through the crew mess and up the stairs, we must have a secondary escape route. So, in the event that the first escape route is blocked, all of the crew can come through here, pull down this hatch, and go through to the deck above. So, top bunk or bottom, which would you choose? My preference has always been for the top. Why? Well, most of the time you get a little bit more space, but don't tell Chef that. Remember that up here in the bow, the boat is shaped like that, so the higher up you go, the more space you have, and with any luck the shipbuilder will have allowed for that fact and given you just a little bit more bed. Next, it's the bed with the view, and you won't have anybody climbing across your bed all the time. By comparison, it's much tighter down here at the bottom. Chef likes Star Wars. And as some form of compensation, I let him have the little locker at the bottom. Moving along down here, we've got some storage for our shoes. Negatives of the top bunk? Well, it's a real pain to make the bed. And I guess it wouldn't be ideal if you fell out. Right, time for me to get out of my pyjamas and then we'll carry on. Okay then, where were we? Ah yes, the notice board. 
Chef's removed most of the stuff from here to protect his identity, but just a little clue here and these guys, which I thought was his high school rugby team. Turns out that's the spring box. Shows you how much I know about rugby. Moving around, here we have the entrance to the shower room. Little hook with these pockets which we've never used and background to the entrance where we came in which usually has some yacht specific safety posters on it but I've taken them down because I can't show you those. Just one more thing that I want to bring your attention to. This bilge here. Just be sure to lock the door beforehand to save someone falling down the hole. Now I wanted to show you this one because within it lies a yachting top tip. We've spoken about what to pack, but a more important question, as far as I'm concerned, is what to pack it in. As you can see, Chef has done what you might think is quite normal, brought himself a couple of suitcases. Lucky for him, we found some space down here to store them, but that might not necessarily have been the case. These things are great for wheeling around an airport and putting on a plane, but they're not so good when you put them down in the bilge and the chief engineer is having to move them for the 15th time to get to some equipment that he needs to maintain. The room they take up then starts to be a real problem and if all of the crew bring cases like that with them, we'll have no space to store them. So I suggest you pack in something a little bit more like this. I've had this 10 years now. It's made by Musto. Holds 85 litres, you get loads of stuff in there, certainly more than enough to fill that wardrobe, and when you empty it, it packs up nice and small. Now I know what you're probably thinking, the cabin's not so big, but I bet the shower room's massive. Well, no. Let's go and take a look. And here we are. It's this wide and not much longer than my arm span. Not much room in here, so they've had to be clever with the space. You may have noticed that when we came in, we actually walked through the shower. Pretty cool, eh? This shower screen actually works surprisingly well, and I don't find the space to be too bad. We of course have a squeegee to dry up the glass and a chamois for the stainless steel. Out on deck I prefer a different brand called the Absorber but this one does the job for the shower. You might be thinking it's a bit of a hack to have to squeegee and chamois the shower every time you use it but remember this is a very small space being shared by two grown adults. So, as a courtesy, it's really important to keep it dry, clean and tidy. You might remember them talking about this during your personal safety and social responsibility module of the SDCW95. This is what they were talking about. The toilet is fairly standard, but unlike your one at home, it uses a vacuum. It's not half as strong as you'll find on a plane, but it's loud enough that it could wake up your cabin mate next door. <laughs> Don't worry, I cleaned it. When it comes to toilets, it's a well-known fact that guys have a certain sixth sense for knowing whether or not a toilet bowl will produce any splashback. You'll not be surprised to hear that this one does not pass the test. So, gentlemen, I suggest you get used to sitting down. After a few weeks, it'll become second nature and you'll even find yourself doing it when you go back home. Your friends and family will love you for it. Trust me, I've tested it in the real world and it's a winner. Now, this cabin tour is fast becoming just a toilet tour, but 
I wanted to leave you with just one last feature. It's soft clothes. Moving on, toilet brush, bin, some more storage, toilet roll, soap dispenser, sink, toothbrush holder. Never used one of these in my life, and apparently neither has Chef, so that stays empty. Another row of cabinets along the top. Notice once more the locking push catches. And up to the window ledge where we have the usual trio of IKEA cactuses, or is it cacti? A window to look out while you're brushing your teeth. And the cord for the blind, if you're shy. And lastly, the mirror up here is actually another cupboard. To finish up, our towels on this wall, this is mine, and I think that just about covers it. I think it goes without saying that if you're the sort of person who likes space to themselves and to be able to spread out, this may not suit you so well. There will be two of you sharing this small space and your job outside of this cabin can sometimes be quite fast paced and stressful. But this is just one of the prices you pay for having your accommodation provided, having your meals cooked for you and earning a good salary. Not sure how long you could handle this for? Don't worry, it doesn't have to be forever. Remember what I said earlier about more senior crew members having larger cabins further aft down the crew corridor. Well, in addition, some senior crew members will even have their own cabin and even that holy grail of crew cabin features, a double bed. So, stay focused, work your way up the ranks and before too long, you could find yourself in one of those cabins. Thank you so much for watching. I really do hope that this has given you a better idea of what to expect from life working on board a soup yacht. Any questions, please just drop them down in the comment section below. A like would be fantastic. A sub would be amazing. And I look forward to seeing you next time.